Hello, this video here is to help you get oriented with GitHub, Visual Studio Code, and working as a team inside of both. So let's get started. Now, this is in particular for assignment three of GEOM 101. So I'm Sean Morgan, I'm the professor of that course, and let's jump into it. Now, that course requires you to create a specific repository. Now I've already done that, but I'll still show you the steps to do it. So what you do is you go up to this little plus up here in the corner and you click new repository. And in here, you enter the repository name. Now the repository that we're gonna be using for this course is A3Web, all lowercase. Now mine of course already exists, so it's giving me that warning. If yours did not exist, it would be green, like this, and of course you would say continue. You would make it uh, public, and then you would say create repository. Typically I like to add at least a readme file so that there's something there, but you don't have to do that. It's just the interface is a little bit different if there isn't a file already present. Okay, so once you have the repository created, there's one other thing you need to do to make sure GitHub Pages is connected to this, because the GitHub interface itself which looks like this, isn't a web interface for an HTML request. This is a GitHub specific page. So this is sort of like a file list in your, um, on your Windows computer. It's actually not a web server. So to make it a web server, you have to actually tell GitHub that you want this repository available over GitHub pages. And to do that, you go into settings, and then from within settings, you scroll down to GitHub pages. And all you have to do, if, if it's already green, it'll show you the link to be able to access the content that was visible in the file list as a web resource. So this is basically the, the URL. So it's gonna be HTTPS colon slash slash my username. So whatever username yours is, will of course replace with that, dot github.io. And then because you've made the repository name A3Web, it would show up as A3Web. Now, if it's not showing this and saying it's ready, it's likely you have to select a source from the branches here. So this is because GitHub is part of Git's solution of managing versions. And you can actually split versions, basically branch it off. So you have to select one as the proper branch here. So we just select the main one because we're not really using the branch feature of GitHub. And once you've done that, it should then go yellow and then eventually it will turn uh, green in about a minute or two and be published on the web. So that's all you really have to do to be able to make it so that it can access it uh, over the web. Okay, now let's go back into the repository and of course, you can go edit individual HTML files directly in GitHub. So you just open up a document here, and then you can go and click on the little edit pencil. And you can commit those any changes back into it. Uh, we're gonna be looking at Visual Studio Code to do this. But first, let me just show you a couple other little tips inside of uh, GitHub to be able to work in the environment. One common question is, how do you create directories? And you can see I have these directories right here. And to do that, all you have to do is go add a file and you can say, create a new file. And then you can just literally start typing your directory name in, whatever you'd like to call it. So we'll call this one file folder. And then if you do a slash on your keyboard, it immediately creates it as a file folder. Now, when you're creating a file, you have to have something creation, like this doesn't create the, the folder yet until you actually create a file. And so what I usually do is a readme.md, which is the default uh, format for GitHub to have a readme file. And I can then say, welcome to my directory. And that can help me document what's there. So you can see now I have this readme.md, which always shows up at the bottom here. Now this isn't a website. This is just a, an individual document for literally documentation. 
And you're welcome to create that on your page uh, to maybe help track your team on what is happening in the page, what steps are there. So it's a great way to have a little bit of documentation. Okay, but now you can see I have that file folder created. And you can see file folder is there. And if I go inside of it, you can see that one file. Okay, so how do you get rid of a file? Well, literally just open up the file and there's this little trash can and you click it and you can commit to delete that file. Now, when I delete the file, because it was the only thing in that folder, the folder goes away as well, as you can see. So for a directory to exist, it can't be empty. It has to have some content. Okay, next is getting files up to GitHub. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. One is add file and you can go upload files and then you can drag and drop or choose the files on your computer. But there's actually a even faster way. So check this out. So literally grab a file. So I'm just gonna grab this file right here. I'm gonna drag it over and you can see it immediately swaps over to drop your files there. And this will upload one or more files and you can keep dragging files over. Obviously don't drag too large a file and that's why it's important to resize your images to the size that will be displayed. So don't upload large uh, HD images if you're only trying to make a little thumbnail, for example. Resize it so that the thumbnail is the native uh, size. And then you can say commit changes. It will then upload those files and display them available here. So now I have an, a JPEG in here. Now I probably should have put that in images. That's okay for, for now though. And I can go open up the image and take a look at it. And this is a great joke as well as there's a little bit of basis of reality here. So if your interface that you're designing is um, a user interface is like a joke, um, if you have to explain it, 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 yeah, it's not that good. So something to consider when you're designing this, this solution. Okay, so now that we have that file there, how do you get rid of it? Well, as I just showed you, I opened up this file. There's that trash can again, and you can delete it. Okay, so pretty cool. So now you know how to navigate in the um, GitHub website. Let's swap over to Visual Studio Code and take a look how it works. Now, most of this is documented inside of getting started. With GitHub pages as well as Visual Studio Code. And this document's available on the Geom 101 website. Okay, so I have Visual Studio Code open and it's already opened my repository. So I can already take a look at all the documents that are there. So you can see A3 Web is listed and you can see um, the documents that are, are there. So this interface, is set up all already and you have to install github pages which that uh, that document does explain how no sorry you have to install the extensions for uh, visual studio code to work with github pages i should say um, and once it's set up all you have to do is tell it how to connect so what you need to do is use this git clone uh, command and then it asks you to provide the repository URL. And if we go back to GitHub, you can see where that is. So I have the repository open and there's this code option. And literally copy this out of there. There's a little button to do that for me. And all I need to do is paste that into here. And that will actually clone that. And I've already done that. It'll ask you a couple of different steps, but uh, eventually, once it's all set up and done, you'll be able to actually access the documents directly. So now inside of here, I can see A3 Web, which is that repository. And that repository, I can go and edit any document I'd like. So I have my different documents. And in this, you can even actually move files around. So you can actually drag and drop files and then reorder them. But let's just go make a simple change to my website this website's just a template. I haven't really configured this. And we'll just add a comment in here. 
and let's just add that comment uh, Okay, so we have my comment. And what I'm gonna do is save this. So just like a normal computer, you can save it. It's like a document. And I can even open this document up and you can actually see where it's located on my computer. So you can actually go and open that document directly on the computer itself. So in the file folder, I can actually just go open this and it will open that document directly. And you'll notice it's a file path. And so this is the first thing you should be doing when you're playing with your own uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript using Visual Studio Code. You don't always have to push it to Visual, uh, or sorry, to GitHub. You can just use it on your own computer. But once you get to a point where you like what you see and you do want to put it into the GitHub environment, you can push it and you can push your changes. Now, you're gonna be working in a team. I'm just doing this as an individual right now, but everybody will basically do this to the same repository. So let's go through and make that change. So we have this change up here. We've saved it, and you'll notice there's this little one down here, and that's source control. This is the one that's watching my GitHub page and seeing that changes have occurred. And if I go over to here, you'll notice that there's a modification on the index.html and I could even open this and it will show me what's changed so this line didn't exist before but it will exist after I actually push this change if I deleted a line it would show up as a red line so we, we can go do that really quickly and you can see what I mean so go back to this document and let's delete a line uh, let's delete something that isn't so let's delete some text. Okay, so we'll change the wording of that. We'll save it. And then let's go back to this. And you'll see it still has one. If I click this now, now you can actually see the red line where that modification occurred and it basically showed what's happened. So there was a change on this line and you can see the item highlighted of that change. You can see the new green lines where changes are going to occur. So it tries to help you out to see what's going to um, impact on the website. Now it's important to not modify something that someone else is also working on, which is why you need to define which area of your web page you are working on. Okay, so I've made a couple of different changes. It still just shows one, and that's because one document is modified. But you'll notice down here, there's a few things that have to occur. Now there's four changes from GitHub that need to come down. That's why there's a four with a down arrow, and there's zero up. And that's because I haven't staged these changes yet. I basically saved them to my local computer, but I have to actually stage them. So to stage them, you have to basically commit them. So yeah, we're gonna stage all our changes and we could actually have done that directly here. So there's a little plus, so that'll stage those changes. And then you can go up to this and then commit those changes to basically push them. And this is just a demo. That's what I'm doing. And every single commit to GitHub it has to have a name for it. And then the reason for that is so you can go back and understand what's doing, uh, what, what you've done. So it's a good idea to use this to communicate with your group. If you ever need to step back and take a look at what happened in the past, you can do that because everything is recorded, which is kind of cool. So if you make a major mistake, there is the ability to step back in time and grab something from the past. Okay, so we'll say demo. Okay, so now we've done that. And you can see it's just chugged along a little bit. And now we have four changes from GitHub that were made directly on GitHub that haven't come down to my local computer. And I have one change to go up. So this could be uh, four other group members have changed the document already um, and they just need to get synchronized. So clicking this now will do this push and pull. And literally it just means it's gonna communicate with GitHub 
and synchronize the changes that I have made. So it's not just copying files to the server because it's not going to overwrite things. It's actually merging and only doing the changes that I've indicated in this browser. So you saw that there was a red line with one word changed. It literally will only make that one change. And there was one line inserted. It will only do that as well. So we'll say, okay. And now it goes through and makes those changes. So you can see it chugging along. It's going to download the four changes and it's going to upload my one change. It might take a minute or two to do this. Depending on how large the changes are and how many, it might take a few minutes. Okay, so once it's done, you'll see the one has gone away. The zero and zero means I am now up to date and I have all my changes on the website. So we can go and take a look at those. Now, sometimes it's not immediate. Sometimes it takes a minute or two for it to uh, come in. And so what we'll do is we'll just refresh this page. And you can see index.html was last updated two minutes ago. So it already sees that change. So we can go take an open that document and you can see my comment is in there. So the changes have been synchronized. Again, this could be a minute or so to be able to have them to come in. So it's not instant. So be patient if it doesn't do it instantly. Typically no more than five minutes though. I've never really encountered a situation where it's taken more than five minutes. So if you need a upper time limit, but uh, usually in about a minute or so it's uh, done. And then once this is uploaded, the page inside of um, here would also reflect it. So let's go view the source. And you can see that change is right here now. So that's how you can make the change through Visual Studio Code and how to make the change inside of GitHub and working with it. Now, this is still assumes you're working by yourself. You're not going to be working in a team. So how can you all work on the same repository? Well, one of you has to be what's called the master repository. So you're going to be creating it and you, you just need to designate one of your group members as the master holder of the repository. So they're going to have complete control over this. And what you can do is add other people as contributors to the site. And to do that, we just go to the settings up here. So we have A3 Web open. We go to settings. And in here, you can manage access and you can invite a contributor. And you just need to basically find their username on GitHub or enter their email address. And then you can select that person. So if I, I have a, um, another account on here, And then I can actually invite that person. So now I have that person there. So now the other person needs to go and basically accept the invite. And once they've done that, they have complete control like you do over that repository. They can upload or download files. So uh, that's the, in edit files that is. Um, so that's how you can actually add individual members to the repository. Okay, and that's about it. So I hope this video helps you out on getting running with GitHub as well as using it in your group and using Visual Studio Code. Thanks a lot and have a great day.